Hello all, I am Sweety Pinjani. I welcome you to Sweety Speaks official YouTube channel where we are going to learn a lot of VLSI concepts, lot of VLSI subjects in easy language. Today's topic is why do we need OOPS? To understand this, we need to first understand what are the problems with Verilog. Then we will understand how OOPS solves this problem. That's why it was introduced in system Verilog. Let us see. In Verilog, the data and functions which operate on this data are in different files. This is the first problem. The second problem is Verilog does not support structures. If you remember in system Verilog tutorial series, we had talked about the data type which was introduced in system Verilog. It is called structure. What is the importance of structure? In structure, you can use variables of different data type as a data type called as structure. So if you want to club variables of different data type together, you can use structure. This facility is available in system Verilog not in very long. Let us see this problems with the help of an example. Say I want to have a packet. In my packet, my address will be 32 bit. Data will be 64 bit. I have one read write, which will tell whether your data is read or write. And this is of one bit. In Verilog, to store this packet information, you need multiple arrays. One array for address, one array for data, one array for read-write. Because you don't have structure. So you can't club all these together. You need to declare separate arrays for each different variable of each different data type. So the information about one packet is spread across multiple arrays. If I want to understand what type of uh, transaction is to be performed in one packet, I need to go through address array, data array, read write array. If there is a more complex packet, there are packets which have very complex data type. There are packets which can have more than 20, 25 different variables of different type. In that case, I'll need to handle 25 different arrays just to get information about one packet. This is how tedious it becomes when you use Verilog. Another problem is arrays in Verilog are static. If you want to have 100 different packets, you need to have array of size 100. Now in case, actually you are just using 20 packets. Then the remaining 80 memory locations are wasted. And say if you want to add 20 more packets, you want to have 120. Then you need to go change the size of the array to 120 so that it can accommodate 120 packets. And then you will be able to use it. However, in System Verilog, if you remember in System Verilog tutorial series, we had talked about some arrays which are dynamic like dynamic arrays there was q which is also dynamic one dimensional array there are associative arrays so these are dynamic the size is not fixed since the arrays are static in very low, there is an efficient memory utilization i need to hard code the size of array I may underutilize it or I may overutilize it. Very rarely I'll utilize it as much as I have declared. This is very rare case. How does OOPS help to solve these problems? First thing is in OOPS we can create complex data types like structure. I can declare a structure of type packet which will have three different variables, address, data and read write. All these are clubbed together into one structure packet, which will hold information about address as well as data and read write. 
I don't need to go to multiple arrays to get the information about packet. I'll just get that information from the structure packet in system Verilog. In system Verilog, you can tie the data types with the functions that operate on them using something called as class. It's a OOPS concept class where you have data types and the functions which operate on that together in one class, in one file where your class is declared. We are going to see about class in the upcoming lectures. Now just understand that OOPS helps us club data types and functions that operate on them together. With the help of OOPS, you can focus on transactions, complete transaction, not just signal. For example, packet is your transaction and the signals inside your transaction are address, data, read, write. Now to understand what type of transaction it is, you need information about everything, address, data, read, write. It's better to club all of them together in a transaction instead of signals. This facility is provided by OOPS in system Verilog. It eliminates the need of multiple arrays because I have defined everything in one particular data type which is known as structure. And OOPS has efficient usage of memory because I can use dynamic types like I can use dynamic array so that my size is determined at the runtime. I use the memory as per my usage at runtime. No need to hard code the size of the array. These are the advantages which we can get from OOPS. That's why in system Verilog, OOPS was introduced to make our job easy and to work with complex designs having complex data types. I hope now you understood why do we need OOPS. In the upcoming lectures, we are going to deep dive into OOPS concepts. We are going to cover all OOPS concepts one by one. Don't worry. In case you missed system Verilog tutorial series where we had talked about different data types, I'll share the link in description. Just go through that. We also have system Verilog question and answer series, trick code series, and a lot of other series are going to come up. Just to stay tuned to such good quality, easily understandable content in VLSI, which is freely available, please subscribe to Sweetie Speaks official YouTube channel. Thank you.